In today's video, I'll show you how to place an automated order inside of the QQQ ETF. I'll start by talking about the setup that I observe, why I'm looking to get short, and then we'll write some actual code to get us short the next time a certain set of conditions happens. Now let's get started first with understanding where the queues are currently at. If I zoom out, this is the price channel I think the QQQ ETF is trading in between. With our high from June-July time period and the subsequent lower lows that we've formed, I've connected them to get our upper side trend line. If I zoom in, you can see this a little bit cleaner, where with yesterday and today's candle, we're flirting with the upper edge of this trend line. Now to draw the bottom trend line, I right-clicked and I selected Redraw as a channel. And to create that channel, I undershot it a little bit by tagging it to this open gap right here. You could certainly have widened the channel if you wanted to account for this candle as well, which would have given you a channel closer to here. But that to me felt a little bit too wide for trading purposes. I think the midline closer to this 450 mark makes sense. Now with all of these conditions, we're now towards the upper end of our price channel. And I think it's likely that we start to see a rollover back to the midline. However, I have no idea if that's going to happen. There's one specific condition that I'm waiting for, and that's this edge signal confirmation, this red arrow. That's our overbought, oversold confirmation, which in this case, the next time we see it, would tell us that we're officially now in overbought territory. Let's zoom in to the last time we saw this edge signal. Notice we had the overbought confirmation, and the next candle we tagged just slightly above that previous candle's high, before we saw sellers reject this level, and that was a really nice place to go short, the high of the candle with the edge signal. That's if you see it the first time. The second time is almost your get on the train, it's about to get going sort of idea. Now, if we try to translate that to code, the way that I see this is three separate conditions. The first condition is going to be, do we have an edge signal on the previous bar? The reason we're going to check the previous bar is so that we know that the signal has finished printing. So step number one is going to be to check, do we have this edge signal? That's what we want our code to do. If true, then we want to check if our current candle's closing price is greater than or equal to the previous candle's high price. This way we know that we're shorting towards a fairly good price, a place where we're hoping that sellers actually come in. Now the third mark here is I wanna have something that automatically cancels this order if I'm totally wrong. If the queues end up overshooting, let's say breaking above this 485 mark, then I want to automatically cancel the order if we're greater than or equal to 485. I apologize for the terrible penmanship there towards the end, but really three separate conditions. The first is we're looking for the edge signal, red arrow on the previous bar. The second, if that is the case, our current bar's close must be greater than or equal to the previous bar's high. That way we know we're shorting at a good price. And third, we want to automatically cancel this order if price breaks above 485. Let's translate that to code. Now to get started, I'm going to right click. Since we're looking to sell, I'll click sell custom with OCO bracket. Now with the conditions that come up, the first thing I like to do is change the quantity. If this is your first time with any sort of automated trading scripts, always start with paper money. And even in live money, start with a really low quantity, even something like one share first, where you're assuming Thinkorswim is going to have bugs, glitches, whatnot, and you're totally okay dealing with it. Now I'm going to open up the order rules panel by clicking the settings icon that's available right here. Once the order rules panel populates underneath conditions, I can click symbol, which will autofill to QQQ. Underneath method, I'll select study, and there I'm going to click edit, navigate to the ThinkScript editor, and here for all volatility box members, this is the one simple line that you can use for the edge signal uh, arrows. You can say plot signal is equal to TI underscore edge signals, as long as you haven't changed the indicator name. I add the parentheses so that Thinkorswim knows we're referencing an existing study. And there we can reference the plot of the edge signal, which is the bearish trigger. This is what the red arrows are called. Now, since we want to check that the, these arrows are there on the previous bar, I'm going to add a bracket with a one, which means we're now checking if there's a bearish edge signal arrow on the previous bar on the daily time frame. Now, that was our first condition. 
But you remember, we had two conditions for our entry. Not only do we want to check if we have this bearish trigger, but if so, we also want to check then if our current candle's closing price is greater than or equal to our previous candle's high price. Trigger this if all of these conditions are true. I'll click OK. We're going to add a cancel condition here, which is cancel this if QQQ is simply greater than or equal to $485. We'll change this time in force to good till cancel. And since we're going short, I'll link our limit price to the ask and click save. Now for our two exit conditions, I'll click this drop down and link them to the average price. And instead of a plus or minus $1, I will up this to $5 so that we account for any room that the QQQ may need. Now you'll notice we get one error which says order triggered by GTC order must be GTC or a plain market order. So let's change both of these to GTC as well. And that should fix that issue. Now if I click confirm and send, Thinkorswim is automatically going to wait and watch for those specific conditions that we coded in to be true. Only when we see the bearish edge signal on the previous candle and our current candle's high price is, or closing price is greater than that previous candle's high price, will Thinkorswim place the short side order. Once it places that short side order, we have a, a stop and a target of a plus or minus $5, which you can of course manually adjust if you'd like. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to place a very simple automated trading script based off of some observations that we made. We started with the price channel, we identified specific triggers to let us know when we're in overbought territory, when we're interested in getting short. We then made sure that we're getting a good price to try and get short, getting a little bit greedy there. And we also set in our stops and targets for protection. If you don't already have the Edge Signals Indicator script for all Volatility Box members, this is included for free with your membership. If you're not a Volatility Box member, I'll leave links in the description box for you to learn more about the Volatility Box models and uh, the different asset classes that we support. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.